so stephen we're delighted to have you at icene what is your message at this year's conference well my message at this year's conference is pretty much the same message i've had since i came public and that is uh, sound and music is much more powerful much more impactful on our lives than many people have realized and that when it comes to healing music not all music is created equal some music works better and certainly some music works better for some people than others but specifically in terms of engaging and evoking the relaxation response and the healing response there are certain parameters and certain factors that um, can make the music you use uh, more effective and my message as it'll be in my workshop and in, as in my recordings is that by honoring the built-in and innate intelligence in the body working with the body's pre-programmed responses to sound and music uh, attuning and aligning and activating the chakras and also activating the deep relaxation response by so doing we can easily uh, entrain to the dominant electromagnetic field of the earth tune in to a higher level of coherence in our own bio field and connect to the larger spiritual dimensions through our through tuning our own human instrument our own uh, being in the world through properly listened to composed and uh, being present with music and sound how can people find that kind of music well one way one of the ways to find that kind of music is to come to my website uh, innerpeacemusic.com stephenhalpern.com the other way to get them uh, essentially, what I recommend is paying attention to how you yourself respond to music, whether it's classical music like mine or, or a variety of others, you're looking for a couple of specific physiological markers. Those involve breathing slower, breathing deeper, uh, and as you become more familiar with this, you will feel what it feels like to be in a more coherent energy field. What we're finding out now is that this really does relate to the quantum field and that experience of, or how I get to that and what I recommend is in the paradigm of listening to the spaces between the notes. It's the same thing that Deepak Chopra was talking about in terms of getting to the gap between thoughts. That's been my, my muse, my source of inspiration when I'm composing and recording. I get into that place and when I record that is also recorded and encoded into my recordings, such as Music for Sound Healing or the uh, world famous Chakra Suite. Uh, that's built in. So even if the listener doesn't know that that is what's, what's going on, because the music doesn't have a very strict beat, uh, because the music has that aspect of flow, your heartbeat immediately resonates with and in train so the heart field when the heart waves are expanded the brain waves shift into uh, a deep alpha and high theta range and this happens automatically when you uh, give the listener the proper uh, raw materials and sound and music in a way that doesn't uh, get people to respond in the same way that they do to most music which is why if you listen to most music, you respond in the same ways, which is more of a high beta, uh, an intellectual analysis, evoking what I call the paralysis of analysis that keeps you stuck in the left brain that doesn't get you into the deeper places that happen with, where the music takes you to the silence beyond the sound, which is what the mystics have been telling us for thousands of years. So you contribute to people's lives by helping them open their hearts, quiet their minds, relax. I mean, overall, it sounds like people's health and well-being is improved. Absolutely, and that's what's kept me in business for 35 years. Uh, what I do, and what I wasn't able to speak about publicly in the early days because it was you know, still a little far out, when I started in 1975 talking about healing with music, the music for health and relaxation, there was no field with that. Uh, the music industry was not excited about it. Even music therapy said, no, 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 you only could use classical music for that. And I showed through my own subtle energy research with, with some wonderful scientists that not only could you, but in fact, music like this blows out, blows away mostly of the classical music, which was not designed and composed for that use. So I 
package that experience, as it were, through the vehicle of CDs and now MP3s and downloads. But as uh, one of the great uh, uh, medical researchers, Paul Pearsall, an author of The, the Heart's Code, uh, introduced me one time at a conference, said, you make music that allows people to have a spiritual experience without naming it. So a lot of people who've never meditated and would not want to meditate can say, I love how your music makes me feel. So I've been the anonymous facilitator of transcendent experiences in people who've never had that, or would buy, because of their religious dogma or whatever, would not be open to that, as well as a lot of people who are more spiritually aware were immediately resonating and attracted to that music because there wasn't, in the early days, music like that out in the world. And now there's there's a lot of variety, but there's still there's there's a there's unique fingerprint and, and music print in there. How did you get into music, and specifically music with healing properties? I got into music, it got into me. Uh, early in my life, uh, I don't even basically remember, but my parents told me that I used to crawl down the hallway in the apartment that we lived in because one of the neighbors had a Victrola and were dating ourselves, uh, but my parents were not into music. So I would wander into the neighbor's place and when I, my parents finally got me one, it was always something I was attracted to, but it was never something I really recognized as a soul need until early college, and actually the first week in college when I had some experiences and met some teachers who said, this is what you're supposed to be doing and I created an academic independent study program so allow, uh, that allowed me both reading and experiences. That was still a lot of left brain, but coming up through jazz and high energy jazz rock in the late 60s, I had some experiences on stage playing music where I tapped into that state where the music played me. And that was where some of the great jazz musicians like John Coltrane would talk, talk about some of the great classical musicians. And when I came out to California on what I thought was a two-week vacation, I had an experience uh, sitting and meditating among some redwoods that allowed me to hear a whole different kind of music. And, and within an hour, I had wandered into uh, a wrong building, uh, found the piano, started playing it. And when I was startled by the 20 people who were suddenly in the room, they said, how did you, who are you and how did you learn how to play that? And I could tell them how I, who I was, but how I started playing it, because I played kind of in a trance and in a deep meditative state, I wasn't fully aware of what I was doing, made a tape recording, started getting a left brain understanding of the context, and started being able to do that in non-deep altered states. And then over the years, both conducted more research and learned to go into that state in the studio so that when I'm composing as a d direct transmission, I don't have to write it out in uh, pen and ink, little notes, little black dots on white paper. The music goes directly from my fingers through me, transduced through my fingers onto the recording medium, and then it's, it's available. And that's how I got into it. And for many years, uh, I was the only one talking about that aspect of music. But because I connected with people like Dr. William Tiller, and other scientists, Dr. Andrea Buhart, some of the people that we heard at this conference, I had some insights and some information that was uh, given to me that was not available to other people, and I would incorporate that into what I would share with other people, up to a point that sometimes you couldn't talk about it yet, but that was always how I got into it, and how I've continued to honor both the sources of my inspiration and uh, work to keep my own instrument in tune so that I can play and be a clear transmission vehicle for the music to manifest and to make that contribution to creating more peace and harmony and health and well-being on the planet. I know that your music touches everyone who buys your CDs, buys your products. How about other musicians? Have you encouraged them to find this place of allowing the music to play them? That's a great question. I have. In fact, over the years, uh, a lot of musicians have acknowledged me privately, some in public, some will say privately and go elsewhere, you know, say something else in public, but you were the first one I heard talking about that. Because of you, I got into this field, and then they established their own channels and their own sensitivities. But uh, yeah, 
that seemed to be part of my mission in this incarnation to be a way shower, to be the first one to help anchor that. One of the people who's uh, presenting here, Dr. Walter Simkew, uh, I've been connected with some of his research and have had recently some additional insights into my path in other lifetimes to bring me to this uh, point. But uh, being an example to others and being just like Yuri Geller in a sense, to show that it could be done, just that fact wakes other people up in some cases. And that's, that's another part of the work that I've been doing in the world. What's next for you? What are you working on currently or have coming out? Uh, a couple different things. One is my 35th anniversary uh, recording. Uh, and it's called something that I wrote in the liner notes of my first album called Paradigm Shift. I discussed early on that the kind of composition that I was doing and the intention behind the music represented a paradigm shift away from the structure and the, the rigid conforms of classical music or pop music or even jazz music. And for that, mostly I got negative reviews by most of the music reviewers, but the consciousness reviewers said, wow, something's different going on. Uh, so now again, I'm calling the album Paradigm Shift. It has some incredible music that uh, manifested in the studio on the exact 35th anniversary of the first day I was in the studio. Uh, I wasn't there by accident, but the magic that showed up, you can never totally count on that, but I was there and present and awaiting. Uh, and I also have some projects uh, dealing with enhancing sleep. I have one album on that already, and there's need for a lot more. So in some cases, I'm working with uh, sonic entrainment technologies. In some aspects, I'm also working with uh, subliminal affirmations. Uh, and I'm also finally focusing on uh, breast health support and prostate health support. Uh, two issues that uh, both personally and uh, some of my own friends have had issues with and uh, obviously millions of other people in the world have issues with. So that's, that's uh, where the focus for the next uh, year and a half will be. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, what else I'd like to share is in listening to music, and I was mentioning this and I'll mention it in my workshop tomorrow, even if it's only five minutes a day or even a week for all us type A individuals, give yourself the treat, honor your spirit, honor yourself by taking five minutes of not multitasking when you're listening to music, but give music your total attention. Listen with intention and attention, and that's how to really engage a lot more of the healing response. You might need to listen with headphones or just some good uh, sound system, but if you're totally present, that is a way to go deeper into music, to get more out of the music, and that's also one of the things that I um, would like to remind people. You know, Back in the 60s, we learned that, and then over the years, so many other things have come around with MTV and videos and music behind us all the time. Many people forget to close their eyes, go inside, and listen. So that's probably the other thing I'd like to recommend. And then when you listen to music that you like, you'll find that some music is more appropriate for that than others. And for those special sacred moments where the music helps create sacred space, that is another major reason that I do what I do. Uh, you allow yourself to be resonated and entrained by the music much more powerfully, easily, and effectively. And more enjoyably. There is, as we know, a high that happens with a pleasure response. So it releases a lot more endorphins and that releases more healing. So it's a good thing and it's a self-perpetuating uh, cycle. So I, I totally recommend that. Thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, my pleasure. Namaste.